What up guys, welcome to another episode of the vlog and today we're inside the Maserati GT. I know, it's been a long time since I made any video in regards to this car. Uh, it's, I just been so busy with like everything, you know, it's the normal excuses, right? Like I never intended to stop YouTube entirely. It's always something like I, whenever I have like a, a burst of creativity, like today, that's when I want to do it. And I figured since we're going to be in traffic for a little bit, uh, might as well just kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, talk to you guys and kind of tell you guys how it is to drive this car. I haven't really made an official review of this car. So just to kind of feel you guys in, we've had this car for probably about a year now. And I, when I say we, I mean us. Because you're sharing in this experience with me of ownership. Like the reason I bought this car was kind of like YouTube. It's kind of like, you know, I was thinking like, wow, if Stradman can do it, I can do it too. For those who don't know, I do work for I do work for an exotic dealership. I'm not gonna name what the exotic dealership is. Like um, you know, you can find out on yourself just because uh, I don't wanna like just blast it out there um, that I that I work for them. But the but it's just like the amount of work I do with them and then the type of cars I drive and stuff like that. Like once you see kind of like my day to day like what I have to do and the, what cars I'm kind of around you're like damn right like you'd focus all your effort onto that too and that's essentially what I did but this is kind of this video is kind of to fill you guys in and also kind of like my review of this car after 20,000 miles and almost a year of driving it so um, for those who don't know I daily drive this car to work I used actually I used to before the whole coronavirus thing kind of intended to to keep this car forever and I was like uh, like why not like uh, why not enjoy like a, such a crazy car every single day even though I intend to drop to keep this car a lot putting hundred miles a day is absolutely insane uh, I mean the miles rack up quick and then you know 20,000 miles later and a year later that's how much you accumulate by driving it like a you know Monday through Friday 100 miles a day and then on the weekends I go to car meets and stuff like that but this car has been such a fantastic absolute dream to like own like so a lot of people who are concerned about the problems with it and then of course like you know the car is dated like the interior hasn't been changed like hasn't changed from like 07 to oh like 2017 and i'm stuck in the fast lane what the hell what's what is happening today the interior has not like had any significant improvements until like the 2019s 2019s it doesn't even really get any better uh the infotainment screen just becomes you know a touch screen a whole big touch screen and they're just do a few like little improvements here and there for having a car that's been essentially the same for like for more than a decade now it does come with perks and and one of which is reliability so the early 07 09 like the early Gran Turismo's I can't say I can't say too much about the reliability I've heard numerous problems like the, just like simple things too like you know plastic pieces on the like, on the chair breaking off and stuff like that it wasn't like a really well built car I mean a lot of exotics in the you know early back in the day weren't built to be like tough but you know now that this car has been like in production for so long now and we're finally about to get a new Maserati I think like they've been ma making teasers I'll post one right, right, right here next to me but uh, we're finally gonna get a new Maserati I'm probably not gonna buy it because I can't afford it but it looks pretty cool supposedly it's mid-engine supposedly it has a 4.7 liter V8 that this one has but we'll see you know I'm excited as you are to see it maybe you maybe you didn't even know that's gonna exist because you know Maserati doesn't really put out anything like crazy anymore I mean with the with the Maserati GT as I was always saying reliability uh, reliability wise like if you get in my opinion if you get anything 2012 and up like you know preferably 23 2013 and up because 2013 that's when they had the facelift and then that's when they kind of like updated everything you're gonna probably have the most reliable Maserati GT unless you buy you know the 2019s and stuff but even then they've changed the infotainment system and all that like the interior but internally the car has been has remained the same I'm gonna make a video soon I keep saying this of one major problem that this car has it's a very it's a very minor issue it's basically it's like a 
it's like a hose that breaks, but it costs like a thousand dollars to yeah, I know a thousand dollars to fix, right? It's because it's really complicated to get to, and I'll do that in another video. And another video I have planned out is to explain what happened to the white Maserati. Uh, you probably can probably guess what happened to it. I felt like that car was short lived, and that's why I bought this one. This one is mine. This one I own. The white one was my dad's. This car has been an absolute dream to own. Like driving it every day. Like how is it to drive every day? It's amazing. On long trips and long journeys, there's a lot of there's a lot of space like in the cabin to fit like four of your homies. I mean. Two people in the back, they're a little, gonna be a little bit squished, but for what it is, uh, for a grand tour, it's amazing. I mean, for two people, this car is absolutely perfect. It has a lot of room, like in the trunk, and a lot of room here in the back to keep your luggage and stuff. It's very spacious out in the front. It's just a sexy car too. I mean, the way it drives, the way it sounds, it's it's absolutely amazing. The, I'm driving the MC, so the, the suspension is a lot stiffer than it is in the normal car, and that's why you're probably experiencing the shaking. And plus, this road over here where I'm at, it's not really the best. But, I mean, uh, even just for the MC, like this is so daily drivable. Like, the only time you really like regret getting this car like suspension wise it's like if you drive it through downtown LA because downtown LA has literally the worst what some of the worst roads ever like there's potholes everywhere and shit like that and you're gonna feel every single bump but this car is actually very easy to drive like for people who aren't car people it's a very it's like you know obviously any supercar or any exotic car is intimidating to get into but I have to say like this car is actually very easy you kind of like just pop you know you just kind of like pop it into drive and then you just drive off like it's very simple you don't have to use the paddles or anything like it's not like lurchy unless you get the drive-by wire search uh, system or i mean by lurchy i mean like it's not like the throttle is like super sensitive you can like you know it's just it drives kind of like a camry but more sporty and the suspension is a lot stiffer i mean you know I know I'm comparing it to a Camry, but I'm comparing it to a Camry in the sense that it's very easy to drive compared to like your other supercars. Getting into a Ferrari, like they've come so far and then they're very easy to drive now too. But it's just like this one literally still feels like a normal car, you know? It still has like the, it still has the gear shift knob in the center. And then if you want to pop it into like manual mode, you just, you know, you just pop it to the left, drop a couple of gear. probably the key selling point of this thing besides the looks right right it's a car you definitely won't get tired of it's not a car that like you know if you had it if you brought it for a long journey you have to get out take a break or anything me i also have like the comfort seats i know they upgraded the seats like you could get the upgraded ones like in 2013 don't know if they were available 2012 but uh these seats i have to say they're very like for me they're very comfortable they don't hold you tight so if you were to throw this on the track you're not gonna have a good time you're gonna be you're gonna be swinging left and right in the seat and yeah you're gonna be trying to hold on to the steering wheel to keep you in place but that's not gonna happen the old 2013 white maserati gt had like the sportier seats they did hold you in place a little bit more but yeah it's really good on gas too which is surprising so on like a daily drive to like to la whether I take like if I take the 101 freeway and it's and to the 405 and it's completely clear, I'll get average about like 25 miles per gallon, which is insane for like an exotic car, like a 2012 exotic car, right? With a Ferrari V8 out in the front, it's amazing. And then if I take the one freeway, since there's so many stops and stuff, I average maybe like 21, just because there's so many stoplights and all that stuff. I know there's a lot of people out there really eyeing this car lately, like not mine in particular. I'm just saying in general, it's because it's such a it's such a car that's hard to ignore. You have a Ferrari V8 out in the front that's pushing like 444 horsepower, 384, 375 foot-pounds of torque. I can't remember off the top of my head, but those are the numbers approximately. And then the looks, the Pinafrenia looks, and then you get, and then, you know, with an original MSRP of like 150,000, you're getting this at such a steal at like 40,000 and around 40K, like at least mine, when I bought mine was around 40K with 40,000 miles. Like mine was one of the cheaper ones, definitely. Cause it, I mean, definitely because it was an MC, but it does have, you know, its share of problems. And I've gone over this in like other videos already too. 
the problems that this car has isn't pertaining to like all of them it's just to this one just because like the owner before me did not take care of the car I, like i like absolutely not uh, the servicing on this car uh, you know when i took it to like one of the sh one of the shops was like around 12 1200 which is absolutely insane right that's a lot just for like an oil change and then just checking a f like a few things here and there glad to say that you can really you can significantly drop that price if you do the oil change on your own and then you do like you know you you inspect everything on your on your own too if you know how um i have some videos on it and i know this other guy is called normal supercar guy i can't remember his name off the top of my head but he has really good videos on the maserati gt also and there's also this other gentleman on uh on youtube who started making videos on how to basically put a touch screen on like on the infotainment like to replace the info the current infotainment system inside the maserati gt so those are definitely things like you want to look up if you're thinking about buying one and you kind of like you want to maintain it on your own and you also want to give it like a more refreshed look because uh doing the definitely doing the service thing on your own is such a big big reason why i can like afford this car right now you know i know a lot of you guys especially those who kind of like subscribe to the channel specifically for the maserati gt are just like on the fence of wondering like whether or not the, this is such a viable car and in my opinion yes i love this car so much i don't regret buying it um it's such a good daily driver like if you really want to use this car every day you could i have i've been I would strongly suggest like getting like the MC just because they hold their value more and they look a lot cooler. But you know, regular GT nowadays, you can pick like a decent one up. 2013, like as, as low as like 38 grand nowadays or even cheaper. You definitely want to do your research. You definitely want to get a car that's like been well maintained. Uh, and if, if it doesn't show any records, just kind of inspect the car and have it get inspected. So definitely get a pre-purchase inspection. For those who, do, who don't know, um, what a pre-purchase inspection basically does is that they kind of list all the issues and problems that the car has before purchasing the car. So you're, you're well aware of like what issues it has like going into the purchase. I mean, obviously there's some that might happen uh, after you buy the car. Like the TPMS sensor like literally just went out after after I purchased the car and also like the like there's this knob to control the lights like that thing just broke too like literally like two days after i brought up uh, bought the car also but um like other than that it'll tell you like you know if there's you know if it's been maintained well and stuff like that and you definitely want to take it to like a reputable uh, exotic shop you don't want to bring it to a to a dealership or into a shop that they recommend just because you know they might have ties with that with that shop and then they might like lie on a few things you know what i mean that's just how that's just you know that's just part of the game you just have to you just have to realize that so with that in mind you just have to make the pre appropriate preparations when you're buying a maserati gt like definitely you know check the car fast check everything like that just check how clean the car is check for a lot of like paint chips like all in the front if the, it's been like repainted anywhere else like too like mine my front bumper has been repainted even though it doesn't say like on the car fax it's been an accident or anything and now there's a shit ton of paint chests because the paint job was like cheap even though it did match like the the color if, if you don't plan on doing maintenance on your own just be prepared for like that very expensive bill at the end of the day when something breaks because like everything in this car is freaking expensive if you even buy it off a of site yourself and then have the and then do the work like it's still pretty expensive the center vent i did on my own and i think that was about 250 dollars just for a freaking vent right uh like a center air vent that's pretty that's pretty gnarly it's, you know it, the car just becomes so much more affordable and i think that's the key the key factor there is i bet most of you guys who are considering about buying this car are are wondering are these people giving me thumbs up and stuff uh i think the people who are who are considering about this car just on the fence because of like they're just worried about the maintenance and stuff like honestly that was kind of like the big thing for me too i didn't hear really good things but with the 2013s i have to say like i've owned two now and both of them have been fairly reliable like no actually they've been reliable the the white one experienced a very common problem um which is but other than that it was perfect this car had a lot of issues but because it was neglected and it wasn't really taken care of but if you're balling on the budget this is definitely the car i recommend highly more than anything else i mean you get the supercar looks the supercar sound and um yeah and then you get a great 
incredible driving experience. One thing to note though, this car does eat tires. This car is freaking heavy. It's 4,700 pounds approximately. Oh. oh man, you just have to drop it like two gears and it's like freaking loud. What I love about this car too, if there's a cop rolling by, you just press the support button, dead quiet. Look, can't even hear it. <laughs> It's just nothing but great memories in this car. It's hard to say like how it really drives unless you get in on it, like in it yourself too. But if I had to like kind of sum up my notes, it's kind of like it's as easy to drive as a Camry, but with the excitement of a Ferrari. Not to that extent. It's not like super exciting, but it's still very exciting. Like Ferrari definitely is kind of like, you know, at one end, this is kind of like in the middle. It's like it has performance and comfort right there, right smack in the middle, you know? very easy for anybody literally anybody to walk into this car and just start driving it it's not it doesn't take you know with the new ferraris definitely it, it kind of takes some you know thought like you know there's no like just to shift gears or just to put in drive you have to press the paddles to put in the park there's like a little emergency park it doesn't go into park by itself there's no park button or knob that you put the car in the park this is definitely something any mom can drive or any dad can drive like no matter how kind of like hold they are just because of how it's laid out and that's why i absolutely love this car i mean just because you know, it's just so easy i don't know it's like it's so exciting when you want it to be and it's just so relaxing when you need when you know when you need it to be it's like the best of it's literally the best of both worlds it does suck in the corners i mean just the how heavy this thing is like but on like long drives and you're just taking like mountain passes just like not like sharp corners but like just easy corners like that i couldn't choose like a better car you know what i mean like especially around this price point like 40k damn like it's it's hard to pass up on and then you have that freaking awesome sound jesus we're gonna go through a little tunnel right here so maybe i'll i'll drop a gear and disappear a little bit but the traffic's been so bad today but i mean i'm really glad that we were able to have this talk like it's been it's been a long time since i've made any sort of video i mean i've never really intended to stop it's just you know it's um this is kind of like videos are just like my hobby and i love doing them but it's not something i feel like i want to do so very often and here we have a tunnel It, it makes me laugh every time like you freaking downshift it uh but anyways guys i think that's it part of the video you know if there's any other questions you have about this car please feel free to ask me down below i'm i'm here don't message me like if you find me on facebook or instagram i do apologize if i reply late like it's better to reach me here on on youtube if you have any specific questions away but uh, I'm glad that you guys were able to enjoy this drive with me and on that note. I'm gonna cut it right here Thank you guys for watching this video. Peace out guys